Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Respected brothers and sisters, we'll have Hafiz Muhammad Ashiri recite from the Holy Quran. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير Allahul 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Respected brothers and sisters Beloved imam and our beloved youth We'll take a little time uh, So please be patient brothers uh, We have a very brief uh, announcement First of all I am requesting all our Volunteers and executive board Please move all our donation boxes And requesting all of you please Donate generously. This center and all of our activities run solely on your donation. Please donate generously. Jazakallah khair. Inna lillahi wa inna rajiun. Brother Shamsul Haq and Chaudhary Imdadul Haq passed away in Bangladesh. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. May Allah forgive them and admit them in Jannatul Firdaus. Amin. We have a dua request, Sister. Aruru Begum will have a brain surgery for uh, for tumor. Please make dua for her early recovery. May Allah cure her and give her hayatun tayiba. Amen. Our JMC youth will have brothers bonfire on Friday, uh, February 17th after Isha at JMC. For registration, please see the flyers posted on the door and you can also get in touch with our office. It's a, a youth program that is happening next Friday after Isha and our young brothers will have fun outside with uh, uh, marshmallows. marshmallows and a lot of different food for them. It's a program to welcome our young brothers to the masjid and also there will be some Islamic teaching as well and they will have an Islamic manner get together here in our backyard. So please send all of the young kids and you know welcome them to the center because they are the future of this community and the center. So this is happening next Friday after Isha. JMC youth program uh, happens every Friday 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. and JMC sisters sorority program every Sunday from 1.45 to 3 p.m. And our weekly tafsir with Sheikh Akib Chaudhary every Sunday after Maghrib. Adult uh, class every Tuesday, uh, Maghrib by Hafiz Sajjad Abidin. Okay, brothers, uh, I will request our beloved president, Dr. Siddiqu Rahman. We have a special fundraiser. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa shahadu wa la ilaha illallah wa shahadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. As-salamu alaykum. Imam Shamsi, please come here. Chairman, please come here. Dear brothers and sisters, you all know what happened last Monday. It's a tremendous earthquake, especially in Syria, Syria and Turkey. Approximately 21,000 people are died. And it's predict it must be or it might be cross 30,000. 6,000 buildings are collapsed. Just think about if from the each building if it is five people died then it becomes 30,000 people. And thousands of people are injured. Those area people are very poor people. And Allah knows best what happened. This is a trial for them, and it's also a trial for us. I'm requesting brother Imam Shamsiwali, please say a few words. Before that, I'm asking our chairman, so just a few words to say something, and then Imam Shamsi will continue the little fundraising tonight, means today. Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers, sisters, and youngsters. Uh, all we are very sad, you know, this moment. Because uh, this kind of 
tragedy does not happen that often. Allah knows the best, but we must not left out this time. Whatever we can donate, please put your hand in your pocket and give it to them, brothers. They need desperately. Whole world is helping. Even Bangladesh also doing their best. So whole world is coming up, whether it's Muslim, non-Muslim, it doesn't matter. Especially for us, we have a very special responsibility. As a Muslim, we are supposed to help anywhere, anybody in this situation. So inshallah, my request to everybody present already mentioned, our Imam Shamsi Ali is going to talk about it. And be patient, give few minutes time, brother, this is worth for all of us. May Allah accept all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The time is very brief, brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, Mathal al-Mu'minina fi tawadihim wa tarahumihim kal yasadil wahid. That Muslims in their compassion, in their love for one another is like just one body. If anything happened to anyone, it's happening to all of us. If any pains happen to anyone, it is a pain to all of us. What is going on in Turkey and a part of Syria basically is also a test on us. And Rasulullah Sallallahu says, "Man farraja Musliman kurbatan farraja Allahu lahu kurbatan min kurabi yom al qiyamah." If any Muslim make easy for his brothers of any difficulty, Allah will make easy for him or her in the day of judgment. So this is a tremendous opportunity for us to do good things for ourselves first. To do it for ourselves through our brothers. That is possibly the way that Allah opened for us to do good. So please do brothers and sisters in a very short time, do as much as you can to help those brothers. You can imagine a father, you know, sacrificing himself to save his daughter, his kid. And we see that many amazing things on video, very sad and amazing. That many parents sacrifice themselves in order for their kids to, to be alive. So this is our responsibility, Iman responsibility, Islamic responsibility to do our job. They are our brothers. In fact, we feel that they are a part of us. So do as much as you can, inshallah ta'ala. I don't know what is, what is the, the way to do this. Yeah. Yeah. 1,000, Brother Mustafa. Who else? Raise your hand. Brother Mustafa, 1,000. Takbir. Allah accept, inshallah. Huh? Yes, brother? 1,000 in the back. 2,000. 2,000, mashallah. 116. Takbir. Anyone else, brother? Hurry up, time is very short. Quran 1,000. Takbir. Anyone else? Raise your hand. Please do. You know, everyone. I do myself 1,000. Look, our president is 1,000. Takbir. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. He's 1,000. 1,000, our chairman is 1,000. Takbir. Allahu Akbar. Please, anyone else? Dr. Mahmoud Rahman Tuhin. Dr. Mahmoud Rahman Tuhin, 1,000. Allahu Akbar. Takbir. Dr. Najmul. Dr. Najmul. 1,000. Takbir. Anyone else? Is already mentioned. Khaja Mizan Hassan, 1,600. Takbir. Brother Rashid, $1,000. Brother Dr. Muslim Patwari, Takbir. Allahu Akbar, $1,000. Anyone else? Please, brother. Dr. Al Khandakar and Khrushida Khandakar, $1,000. Takbir. Allahu Akbar, Fatima. Takbir, Allahu Akbar, $1,000. Anyone else, brothers? Abu Tahir, Abu Tahir $1,000. Alhamdulillah, 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 Alhamdulillah. Jamaica Muslim Center always is in the front line to help others around. Abu Kalam Azad, Alhamdulillah, $100. Takbir! Jazakallah khair. Yeah, Radib Rashid. Radib Rashid, $1,000. $1, Takbir, Allahu Akbar. Anyone else, brothers? Abu Kalamazar, $100. Abu Kalamazar, you mentioned it? You mentioned it one? Shamsun Begum, Sayyid Rahim, $1,000, Takbir. Brother Yar from Al Mamun. Muhammad Yar, $1,000, Takbir. One person give $100.
One person may Allah accept from him one hundred dollar takbir. One, one lady dollar. Lady doctor, please one thousand. And a lady doctor, she doesn't want to mention her name. One thousand dollar takbir. Allahu Akbar. Muhammad, he mentioned it, right? Brother, our treasurer at the Mamur School. Any amount, any. Any one, brothers. Anything. Any amount, inshallah, is going to be very helpful. Five hundred dollars takbir. May Allah accept it, inshallah. May Allah accept it, inshallah. The box. The, yeah, boxes are running around, and if you intend to pay your zakat, this is also possible. Because these people are in need. They are in need. They are masakin. You know? A student, Hafiz student, mashallah. You know, donated possibly all his money. One, one hundred and fifty dollars. Takbir! Allahu Akbar. And that is a sense of solidarity. We feel what others are feeling. And that's the believers, alhamdulillah. Our connection is rahmah. Ruhama ubaynahum. Our connection is heart to heart. It's not skin to skin. It's about heart to heart. Their hearts are having Allah. They believe in Allah. Our hearts are believing in Allah. And our hearts are connected. When their hearts are feeling pain, our hearts are feeling pain at the same time. That's why we are doing every possible way, brothers, to help them, inshallah ta'ala. Anyone else? Yeah, for those brothers who want to donate later on, you can go to our office. Jamil Rahman, five hundred dollars takbir. Allahu Akbar. Muhammad Shamsul Islam. Oh, we mentioned, mashallah, takbir. Allahu Akbar, one hundred, one thousand dollars. And if you want to continue donating, go to our office. Donation is accepted, inshallah ta'ala in Europe. Brother, the boxes are going around, so whatever amount you want to donate, please donate. And whatever you want to pledge, you can stop by our office. This efforts will continue, brothers. And we'll have box outside of the outside. So please, friends and family, whoever you have, please ask them to continue their donation. Abu Wahidu Zaman, uh, $100. Uh, Rizaul Alom, $500. Allah. So brothers, we have, to, uh, uh, we have to go for the prayer. So Jazakallah Khair, brother, please continue this donation. The boxes are going around. We'll be outside after the prayers. And if you have any amount, if you want to write the check, please write the check to JMC. In the memo section, please write uh, Art Artquick, or you can write Turkey and Syria. And please continue that donation. Those brothers and sisters urgently need your help. And please, brothers, you know, those who have pledged here, you know, it's your responsibility, brothers, to, to bring those uh, checks or cash, whatever, because we did not write your name down. And in a good faith, you bring it to the office. And we greatly appreciate Jazakallah Khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa
الحمد لله الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله لا نبي بعده فاللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله وصحابته وكل من تبع هداه واستمسك بسنته الى يوم الدين وبعد فيا عباد الله اوصيكم ونفسي بالتقوى فقد فاز المتقون فقال عز وجل في كتابه الجليل يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون ثم قال يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء اتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا معاشر المسلمين my dear respective brothers and sisters we thank Allah in the midst of the deep challenges they were facing we remain thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because for muslims who understand the reality of the life based on our faith on our spiritual sight nadrah ruhiyah not only physical eyes we understand that, that this life is changing and moving today we may be upper hand but we don't know what's going on we'll be going on tomorrow and what is going on in turkey and in syria is a happening that is teaching us a lot of things but there is only one point i would like to underline and that is the importance of coming back to our faith that this universe as a whole is being controlled by one powerful hand that is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not take it for granted that is happening all away from us and it doesn't happening to us it can happen to turkey it can happen to syria it can happen to anywhere but it can happen here in new york and so in time that we see others are suffering we have to build that sense of solidarity trying to learn to feel the feelings of our brothers and sisters and that is the only message I'd like to deliver here for this particular matter that is happening in Turkey and Syria. Brothers, the point I would like to underline here today is our own problems in America and in the Western society in general. In my last khutbah, I mentioned several incidents during the new year. From the releasing of the polling by the Brooklyn Institute that Americans increase in the way of seeing Islam. Positive view about Islam increased up to 21%. In 2016 it was only 57% Americans view Islam as a positive thing. In 2020 alhamdulillah 78% Americans view Islam as a positive religion. But what happened by the night of New Year, 31st night, a young Caucasian, aged 19, from 
Maine, state of Maine, attacked two police officers in Times Square. From positive to this incident. And some days later, a crazy guy in Sweden, or Swedia, Swedish man, burned Quran. And a man in Netherlands ripped off a Quran, put down the Quran under his feet. What all this tell us telling us, brothers and sisters? There are many things. Briefly. Number one, it teaches us that Islamophobia is real. It's real. It's not a myth. It's real. And it is happening. But what is Islamophobia? Islamophobia is a fear, irrational fear. People are fearful, worried, or scared without any reason. They don't know. No. I still remember some years back, I was invited by the North Florida University during the time where Pastor Jones wanted to burn the Quran in Florida, North Florida. That is called Pastor John, the burning pastor Quran, burning Quran pastor. So I was invited to speak at Florida University, and there's a five guys in the back having these banners with the word Sharia and kind of there's a blood. And the security wanted to take him, I'll take them out. I said, no, 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 let them listen to my speech. So after my speech, I came to them and trying to smile, shook their hands, and asked him a very simple question. You are bringing this banner with the word Sharia. Do you know what does it mean? Even the translation of Sharia, he doesn't know, they, they don't know. Have you ever read Quran? No. Have you ever met any Muslim before, before you coming here? No. Many of those who are scared of Islam simply because they don't have any clue about the religion. That is what we call phobia. Irrational. They don't have any minds about it. They don't have any knowledge about it. Number one. Number two, Islamophobia, brothers and sisters, is not new. Do not think it's only happening because of 9-11 or it is happening because of Donald Trump being elected as the President of the United States. No. Have been there from the beginning. Adam alayhi salatu wa salam faced Iblis lanatullah alayhi. Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam with Mala. With the leaders of his own people. Musa alayhi salatu wa salam faced Fir'aun. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam was faced Namrud. Isa alayhi salatu wa salam faced the leaders of the Jewish at that time. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam faced Abu Lahab, Abu, Abu Jihal. It has been there. But more importantly for Muslims, what we have to know, Islamophobia is an ongoing basis. Don't think, don't think, that by changing presidents in America, Islamophobia will end. Don't think that there is no phobia anymore in America simply because Donald Trump is being, you know, not the president of America. Now we have Mike Biden, Joe Biden. In fact, Ilhan Omar was just removed from one of the most important committee in Congress. And we have to know that simply not, it's not because she's a lady, it's not because she's African. One of the most important reasons why she was removed from that committee, Foreign Affairs Committee, because she's a Muslim. That is a phobia, brothers and sisters. And we have to understand that. Islamophobia is an ongoing basis until the day of judgment. And that's why Allah in the Holy Quran, when he mentioned that many people wanted to extinguish the light of Allah, they wanted to turn off the light of Allah, Allah is using fi'l mudari continuous tense. Yuriduna liyutfi'u nur Allahi bi afwahim. They want to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouth. They will do everything else until the day of judgment. So we Muslims must understand that no matter what, we are going to face this tremendous challenge. This is the first lesson we take from this incident. Number two, brothers and sisters, it is a painful reality that Islam has been treated or mistreated or treated unfairly for a long time, till now. On the night when that young guy attacked two police officers in Times Square, and in fact he is now in, at Bellevue Hospital, there is a two other mass shootings took place in Florida and in Georgia. But this is the only one 
who commit evil, of course, and we condemn that, is connected to his faith, to his religion. Those who kill people in Florida, in Georgia, looks like they don't have any religion. Only this one. Every media outlet says radical Muslim, Muslim extremist. Islam has been mistreated unfairly, brothers and sisters, and we have to understand that. But the big question is why Islam is always mistreated unfairly? We can blame others, yes. But the most important, we come back to ourselves and realize that I think there is something wrong with us. And at least I'd like to mention here. Number one, because we have that wahan. So what is wahan? We are lacking or even losing our self-dignity with this religion. We don't feel being honored with this faith. And sometimes we are shy being known as Muslims. That's why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi reminded us a long time ago. They, one day this ummah is just like a form on the ocean. They are moving according to the move, movement of the water. The Sahaba said, I mean, قِلَّةِ نَا الْيَوْمَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Are we a small number at a time? No, 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 no. Rasulullah said, no. بَلْ أَنْتُمْ كَثِيرُونَ At that time you are majority. Majority. Two billion Muslims. But you have a disease, a sickness. What is that? Wahan. Sahaba asked, what is Wahan, ya Rasulullah? قَالَ حُبُّ الدُّنْيَا وَكَرَاهِيَةُ الْمَوْدِ we have too much love for this dunya. Or we don't realize that we are going to die soon or later. That is the reason we lose our respect. We lose our honor. Because we feel that we are not dignified by this deen anymore. This is the first reason. So very easily people are putting us down because we don't see ourselves respectful. We don't see ourselves honorable with this deen. The second reason is because we divide ourselves. Obey Allah and his messenger and dispute not. Because when you do that, you're going to fail. Your power will depart, will go away. There's no power. Because we don't have power, people are easily mistreating us. People are easily treating our religion unfairly. This is the second one we need to learn here, brothers and sisters. The third one, because of the time, we learn from these incidents why people are burning Quran, why people are, you know, desecrating Quran, dishonoring Quran, and dishonoring even our Prophet. Remember the Mark cartoon a long time ago, some time ago? Why people are doing? For Muslims, this must be a reminder. A reminder. Particularly those of us living in America and in the Western society, it is truly a reminder. Reminder for what? Reminder to ask this question, did we do our job? What is our job? Did you show Islam to our people around us? With our behaviors, with our akhlaq, with our character. Did we do the responsibility of da'wah to other people? Because as I mentioned earlier, earlier, people are hating this Islam because they don't know. But did we do our responsibility? And if we do our responsibility, did we do it rightly? According to the teaching of Allah, Udu'u ila sabila rabbika bil hikmah. Because sometimes you do da'wah. Da'wah means to invite, to call people to come. But Simon, what is happening? Da'wah here is turning people away. Because the way we do it, our language, our communications, don't talk about non-Muslims. Let's talk about our, about all, our own young generations. Why our own, our own young generation not coming to the masjid? I asked some of those out there in the street. My brothers, I've never seen you in the masjid anymore. I've seen you before coming to weekend school, Sunday, Saturdays, you know, Sunday, but never come to the masjid. I say, Mom, I wanted to come to the masjid, but you know, I always feel that I don't have any respect anymore. And that is sometimes simply because, whatever, I don't want to go to detail here, but we know how to treat our youngs. Open your arm, brothers and sisters, to welcome our young to come to the masjid. Because they are our future. Not only future, they are our now and future. <coughs> so brothers and sisters, we have to do our job. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. Aqulu qali hata astaghfirullah. Fa astaghfirullahu la'allaha sa'atu ijabah. الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين شلوا لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له 
وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله نال بيع بعده صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Another lessons before we end this khutbah is that we are basically at war. There's a war is going taking place, but this war is not physical war. It's not like what happening what is happening in Ukraine. The most dangerous war is the war of ideas. War of ideas. Because ideas create perception. And whoever wins the perception, they are winning the battle. Now let me just give you two examples here, brothers and sisters, in terms of ideas. Do we understand the meaning of tolerance? When the people say, oh, Muslims are tolerant, all oh, Muslims are not tolerant. What is the meaning of tolerance in our understanding? Those people, they understand tolerance, this idea. Tolerance means that there is no commitment to the deen. So if you don't pray, oh, mashallah, it's a tolerant guy. If you drink alcohol, oh, mashallah, it's a tolerant guy. Brothers, tolerance is not that. And we have to have our own idea in defining what does it mean to be tolerant. What does it mean to be tolerant? Freedom, for example, brothers, they use this concept, this idea, freedom, to discredit, to dishonor the holy book of Allah. Freedom. And they say this is freedom of expression. Brothers, freedom, in fact, nothing in this universe, in this life, without any limit. Everything is with limit. There is only one who is unlimited, and that is the one who gives you freedom. Who gives us freedom? The creator of the heavens and the earth. He is not limited. Everything else is limited. So our freedom is limited. When our freedom is limited, when it is undermining the moral ground of respecting others. Let me just give an example. I am free to say my words, and I have a freedom of speech. I have a freedom of expression. But the moment my words come out from my mouth that insulting others, that is not freedom anymore. That is, an that is oppression. That is an insult. So those people who claim to be free, who claim to express freedom by burning Quran, they are not expressing freedom. They are expressing ignorance. They are expressing hate. Even they are expressing stupidity. But let me end with this, brothers and sisters. As they are burning Quran, they call it Quran, but Quran will never be burned. No one is going to be able to burn the Holy Quran. Because our understanding as Muslim Quran is not books only. Yes, we respect those books. But our Quran is here. Our Quran is here. Our Quran is our life. And they cannot burn our ideas, our iman. They can burn millions of books, but they cannot burn the Quran. Why? Because Allah has protected the Holy Quran with the divine protection. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. So that we can do our responsibility to make da'wah. Allahumma amin. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Hamdan yuafi na'amahu kafi mazidah. Allahumma rabbana laka alhamdu wa laka shukru kama yambagh li jalali shukal karima azim sultanik. Allahumma ahdina wa ahdibina wa ja'alna sababa li min ahtada. Allahumma alina al-haq haqqan wa razukna attiba'ah wa alina al-batila batilan wa razukna ishtinabah. Ya maqallib al-quloob thabit kulubana ala dinik. Wa ya musarrif al-quloob sarrib kulubana lita'atik. Rabbana la tajuk kulubana ba'da idhalaytana wa hab lana mil dalunka rahma innaka anta al-wahab. Allahumma yassir lana li إخواننا في تركيا وسوريا يا رب العالمين اللهم يسر لهم أمورهم فيكم لكل خير اللهم يسر لهم أمورهم يا رب العالمين اللهم يسر لهم أمورهم فيكم لكل خير يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهي لنا من أمرنا رشدا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار بفضل سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يسفون سلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأطيم الصلاة Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Shahadu an la ilaha illa Allah Shahadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah Hayya ala salati, hayya ala al-falah Qad qamat al-salat Qad qamat al-salat Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah.
Stau Stau Stakim Stretching your lines Fill up the gaps Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdin Al-Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Lazeen An'amta Alayhim Ghayr Al-Mazzub Alayhim Waladdallin Sabbih isma rabbika la'ala Al-lazhi khalaqa Fasawwa Wal-lazhi qaddar Fahada Wal-lazhi Akhraj al-mar'a Faj'alahu Ghusa'an Ahwa سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك للسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصلى النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة فلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر 
لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر ويعذب الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر بسم الله حمدا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر <تصفيق> 